welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to go over all the books that I read in September, which there were quite a few that I did get to read, but it's going to be kind of like my last hoorah of the year because although I will be reading for October, November, and December, my busy season coming up, so I'm not going to be able to consume as many books as I did in September. So I'm happy that I was able to get through quite a lot of the books that I wanted to get through and uh, just kind of do a little last push until the busy season started. So before we get into all the books that I read, make sure that you like and subscribe. Make sure that you check my description box below. You can join my Patreon. You can go follow me on Pango Books and see if any books are on there that you would like to pick up. Some of these will be on there. Also, you can follow me on my Instagram or my Goodreads. Everything is linked down below. So make sure you check that out as you like and subscribe. So let's get into it. I'm going to try to go in order on how I read. That's how I have it set up as my notes here. Uh, so we're just going to go in order on what I started with and what I ended with. So the first book that I am going to be going over is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Now, of course, if you had watched any of my previous weekly vlogs, you will notice that the majority of these are in there, so you've probably already heard my thoughts. However, if you didn't watch those, let's kind of recap what I thought of these books. Empire of the Vampire I ended up giving two stars to. I just was not vibing with the writing or the way that the story was being told. Um, I just, Jay Kristoff's writing, granted this is the first time that I've ever read from that author, so I can't judge how the rest of his books go, but this was just not for me. It just wasn't. I wasn't enjoying my time here. You are following our male main character. He is the last of the Silver Saints, I believe. And you're going through kind of like all these different stories as if it's like a journal entry or, you know, something like that, the way that it's structured. And I just couldn't get into it because he's being interviewed, right? And like I said, it's kind of like a journal or like an interview type setup. And it just kept pulling me out of the story, out of the world, out of what, you know, he did as a silver saint. And it just wasn't for me. However, I do know there are quite a few people that love this book, mainly because either A, they've writ, um, read by Jay Kristoff before and they just love his writing and the way that he structures his stories or they just really like the way that this book is told. They like the flow of it and everything, which is great. I am so happy that they loved it. It just wasn't for me. Um, so I gave it two stars. Probably won't be continuing because I know Empire of the Damned is coming out pretty soon. I won't be continuing with that. So Sadly, this was a two star for me. Um, if you want more of my thoughts as I was reading it, you can definitely go back and check some of my vlogs out in September, um, which this was my first read, so it's probably gonna be one of the first vlogs that I did for the month. So there is Empire of the Vampire. And then the next book that I read was the monthly book pick on my Patreon uh, book club. Um, that is called The Coven by Harper L. Woods. I gave this book four stars. I absolutely loved this book. It's not very long. I think it's like under 300 pages, but I absolutely devoured this book in almost one sitting because it was just so, so good. I'm trying to think of what her name is. Anyway, we're following our female main character. And she, she's like a witch, um, but her powers or whatever have just been like not awoken, but people know about them because her mother had died. So her mother was masking her powers and her as a witch and all of this. So whenever her mother died, that got released in the world. She is invited to go to this school um, amongst other 12 other witches 
to learn about their magic, to learn how to harness it, do different things. And so she is the last of her bloodline. And then the headmaster, his name is Alaric, I think. Um, he, is his name Alaric? Yeah. Alaric Grayson Thorne. He is um, intrigued with her. They kind of have some type of like, will they, won't they type of romance. And so he, I'm trying to gather my thoughts because he definitely takes it to a whole different level. I don't know what she sees in him, but you know, things do kind of spice up with them. He's very like broody alpha territorial type male um and then at the end of this book you get a cliffhanger or a twist that I did not see coming so I was like I need to read the second book as soon as possible um I think the second one is out now I do believe if I saw correctly I just haven't gotten to it yet but this is also on kindle unlimited so if you don't want to purchase the book then you can definitely pick it up on kindle unlimited it's also available in audio format as well if you want to consume it that way i did um i listened to it on my audio and i'm gonna tell you what the uh voice actors for this amazing i was just in the story in it loving it there's so much about this book that I loved. And for under 300 pages, it packed quite a punch. So pick up the coven if you like a witch's story, if you like a lovers to enemies to probably lovers story, um, if you definitely want to read something about, you know, powers and the way that they manifest after being masked and stuff. This book, there is so much about it. And it, like I said, it packed quite a punch in just the under 300 pages. So the author did an amazing job, and I can't wait to continue on with it. So, The Coven. The next book that we are going to go over is Fairy Dale by Veronica Lancet. Oh my goodness, you guys. This is gothic. This has some horror elements to it. It's a fantasy, paranormal, romance, unconventional romance. There's a lot of things going on with this book. But if you're looking for a really good read um, for the month of October and you're not really into horror books or thriller books, you know, definitely pick up Fairy Dale. It's a standalone. It is not a series. You are following our female main character, and they are in the 50s. And she was raised by these nuns and then ends up being, like, a teacher at this school for, you know, students. Like, kind of like a religious school, I guess. And she lives on there. Well, she finds out um, that her father died. And she never even knew that her father was even still alive. Didn't even know who her father was. Her mother had already previously passed away years prior. So here we are on our way to Fairydale to meet a man that we've never heard of. And things just go off the walls there. And it just, it's a ride. It's a ride. She is in this town that has mysterious deaths, that has mysterious things going on. People don't like her, kind of want to run her out of town, but she wants the inheritance money, you know, just to kind of be spiteful. And then, you know, you have Caleb Hale, who is mysterious and like always in her way and then you have like where she's going to sleep and she's back in like the 1700s as somebody else and she is you know falling in love with a different guy and you guys go pick up fairy dale i i can't stress it enough you definitely if you want more of my thoughts along the way go watch my vlog that was like the first week or the last week of August like I started reading it in August so go read Fairy Dale. that's all I can say that's all I can say if you like um kind of like a dual timeline if you like gothic fantasy romance if you like just a little bit of horror elements that are not scary if you like books to give you kind of a mystery and you're going along the way and trying to figure out like what is this girl going through 
Fairy Dale, it was five stars. I absolutely loved this book. I can't keep going on about it because it was so, so good. Pick up Fairy Dale. Perfect read for right now. So the next book that I had read in September was The Thorns Remain by J.J.A. Harwood. Now, I had so many high hopes, you guys, going into this book. So many high hopes because it's a fey romance. It deals with, I think it's like 19... 1919 and it's kind of like in the Scottish Highlands type of setting um you're following our female main character and she is kind of a commoner right she works on the land of this laird or this lord um and she basically the whole community all the commoners the peasants whatever you want to call them they're all kind of like a community and a family and her and her friends end up going dancing in the woods and weird things start happening to her she wakes up the next day and her friends are missing she doesn't know where they're at and now she's trying to figure out what's going on so she thinks that she's going crazy or losing her mind because everyone's like oh they're in edinburgh or they're you know here or whatever and she's like no they were here last night so anyway she goes back to the woods encounters a mysterious man and our story goes from there there is fey in here there is you know the trickster type fey there is you know some talks of mental health that it kind of alludes to um, but is it you know said that that's what it is so definitely check trigger warnings this book was so boring so boring I ended up giving it two stars only because I just felt like a one star rating would have been less than what it deserves because I didn't DNF the book but two stars um it had so many high hopes you guys so many high hopes the writing was so slow and off the characters I did not feel for any of them at all even throughout the whole story even our female main character didn't feel anything I felt no romance that there was supposed to be romance I didn't feel any of it so I don't know guys it, it had a lot of high hopes for me but if you like whimsical if you like the fairy tale-esque type of stories um i do believe this has and i've never read the folklore or whatever about it but the story of tam lynn um i do believe this has a lot of elements from that so or it may even be a tam lynn retelling so if you like that definitely pick this book up but it just wasn't for me and that's okay. All right, so the next book that I ended up reading was an arc that I had gotten sent back to me back several months ago. And I do believe this book came out in either July or August. I was a little bit behind, but that is The Rebel King by Gina Maxwell. Guys, this is five stars. This is the second book in the Deviant Kings series. And the first book is The Dark King, which I read last year. Um, but The Rebel King follows another brother, Tiernan. And I can't really tell you a whole lot about it because even though they're considered standalones, they have this overarching plot. So you can't just dive into book two without reading book one. So I want to suggest that to everybody. Make sure that you read book one first. Um, but book two follows Tiernan and it's after some events happened in the first book and he is considered the rebel king because he likes to party he likes to just not take things seriously he was not trained to be the future king of the dark fae because he was just the heir apparent the heir spare right so we're following Tiernan and he kind of has this fling with Fiona, who's like a housekeeper type fae. She was not noble born or anything like that. And they're kind of told that they can't be together for certain reasons. And so that's, this is like their love story, what they go through. But this book with that overarching plot, like I told you guys, it started off, you know, with some things that I didn't figure out in the first book. It was so, so, so good. And I cannot express that enough. 
This story is an urban fantasy. It is a romance. It does have fae in it. Um, it deals with like the dark and the light fae. So it's not like a seely or unseely court or anything like that. But it's like dark and light fae. Um, you are in modern day Las Vegas. The Varen brothers are like the kings of Vegas is what, you know, it's alluded to in the human world. Um, and it does take place all in modern times. So if you like urban fantasies and you like a fey fantasy romance and you like your books kind of dark that deal with like BDSM, hostage, um, you know, some dark elements, check the trigger warnings. You will love this. I cannot wait. The way that this book ended, um, the epilogue in it that alluded to Finian, who is the third and final brother of the Varens, um, his book is going to be next and I cannot wait. Um, I, at first in my vlogs was like, I don't know how they're going to do his book. But then I went back and read his epilogue that like kind of sets up everything. And I was like, oh, I need it. I immediately wrote in the Entangled Insiders, um, Facebook group since I'm an insiders for them. I was like, I need book three now. You need to tell the author that I need book three right now. So I've already put in my thing that I want the arc for it. I don't care if it's an e-arc. I don't care if it's physical form. I just want to read the book. So if you guys, like I said, like a dark fantasy romance that's an urban fantasy and that deal with the fae, definitely go pick up Dark King, which is the first one by Gina Maxwell, and then continue on with Rebel King because it was so good. Five stars. Both of them are five stars. I know that Bookish Box had just done a special edition of um, The Dark King, which I was not expecting. And so whenever I got that in, I was like, oh, please keep going with this series. I need all special editions of them because I'm obsessed. So go pick up Dark King. All right. So the next book that I had read in September finally was House of Beating Wings by Olivia Wildenstein. I was skeptical going into this book because I'm a huge Olivia Wildenstein fan because I read her Rose Petal Graves series, which is a five-star read for me. Love every book that's in that series, um, which there's three and then I think there's like two or three spinoffs at the end of it. But House of Beating Wings is following our female main character. She is half fae, half human. So she's not, you know, of noble birth or anything like that. But she goes to a, an all fae school. She ends up befriending the prince of this kingdom that they're in whenever she's younger. So, of course, they grew up, you know, very close, like they're best friends and everything. And she ends up seeing... I don't know. Did she seek out? No, she went to um, this kind of like party thing that was going on. And there was like an oracle or a seer that was there. And they told her that if she freed the five iron crows, that she would be the queen of the kingdom. So she took that as I'm going to marry my best friend, the prince. And so she doesn't even know what these iron crows are. So here we are. We're going on this quest with our girl. She's trying to figure out what the iron crows are. She's trying to figure out where to even find them. She is, you know, all about wanting to marry her friend because she had a crush on him for the longest time. And the story goes from there. I can't tell you much about it other than that because it will give away some plot things. I absolutely loved this book. I gave it another five stars. I had quite a beginning of the month. I'll tell you that. Um, but I absolutely loved it. I can't wait for to read the second one. I think it's called House of Pounding Hearts, I believe. You guys, if you love fae fantasy romances, oh my gosh, you need to pick this up. If you have never read from Olivia Wildenstein, you will love this book. If you have read from her, you will also love this book. So good, so amazing, and I do believe all of the books, there's two of them, or three of them that are out, and there's going to be a fourth one um, that's going to be released later on, but all three books that are out right now are, are, are on 
Kindle Unlimited, so you can definitely go do that. I know the first book is on audio. I don't know if the second one is yet as of filming now, but earlier in the month it wasn't. But House of Beating Wings, so good. I loved the storyline. I loved the found family. I loved all of this cast of side characters that came into play. I loved The Crows, and I can't tell you why, but if you've read it, you know. I loved The Crows. Um, I just loved everything about this story, and I cannot wait to continue on with it. So definitely pick this up if you like fey fantasy romances. So the next book that I ended up reading in September was The Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. So you guys, <laughs> I am late to this whole train of Red Queen. So I know that there's a lot of people that love it. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like it because of, you know, how cliche it was and everything. I ate it up. Absolutely love this story. It is a YA dystopian fantasy-esque romance. Um, it has all of the ingredients of what you would think a YA dystopian romance fantasy whatever is supposed to be made up of back in like 2014 2015 time frame has all of the cliches has all of the ways that it's written the characters the story I mean just down to the letter all right so it's structured the same way but I don't care I ate it up I loved it I could not get enough of it so I can't wait to continue on with this series which unfortunately probably won't be until the beginning of the year because I have quite a few books that I want to get off of my shelf so you've already seen that video of my unrealistic TBR for the rest of the year but Red Queen follows um, our female main character and she is raised as a red blood um, red bloods are kind of like peasants commoners you know basically of low birth you have the silver bloods who are the nobility who have the magic and all of this so she's raised as a red blood um and she she's okay with that really um i mean she steals people you know um try to do what they can to survive and buy food and everything because they're pretty poor and she gets caught stealing then she meets a mysterious man next thing we know she's working as a servant in the palace and that's where i have to leave you um we find out that the silver bloods are of course not you know anything special like we thought we find out about uh, the prince and the other prince and how we're entangled in with that um there was some twists and turns uh that i will say i didn't expect but i did expect it it's kind of weird right like i didn't see it coming but i knew something of that magnitude was coming so if you guys like why a dystopian fantasy-esque romances definitely pick up red queen if you haven't i mean i'm probably one of the last people that is finally reading this series but i ended up loving it you know and i think that there was an article that went around actually recently where someone said that back in like 2015 or maybe 2018 someone had asked victoria aveyard you know like why she basically made it just like every other YA book out and she was just like it was I wanted to make money it was a money grab and I, I like that honesty I really like that honesty but you know what I love the story so you're gonna be getting my money <laughs> so you did good but Red Queen I ended up giving four stars too because of course it wasn't perfect but I do still think about this book to this day so the next book that I ended up reading in September is Morally Corrupt by Veronica Lancet. Now, whenever I was reading Fairy Dale, I did reach out to her whenever I finished and I said, give me another recommendation of yours because I had never read from her before. And she recommended Morally Corrupt, which I'm so happy she did. I ended up giving it four stars um, because you are following our female main character. Now, this is a very dark romance, you guys. I suggest any Veronica Lancet books that you plan on picking up if you've never read from her, check the trigger warnings because there is quite a few in here that are pretty big and significant. So definitely check that out. So that's my warning. Um, but you are following our female main character who is an assassin. Um, she works for part of the mob or the mafia and she loves killing 
She loves the brutality of that life. And then she is married to Theo, who, you know, Theo is like this good guy, um, you know, does a lot of stuff in the community, works in politics. Um, and so she ends up acting like she's some innocent, you know, wife. And the story goes from there. I can't really give much away because then all of the revelations that you find out, the story, the mystery of it, everything would give it away. But it was so good. I really liked the fact that you have the bad girl with the good guy type of concept and how they work through that. So I really enjoyed that part of the book. So definitely pick up Morally Corrupt if you like dark romances, things that deal with like the mob or the mafia, the reversal of the bad girl with the good guy type of concept. Um, it is kind of like a standalone in this series. So you don't have to read them in order because uh, there's no overarching plot. But um, this was the first book in the morally questionable series is I think what it's called. But I'm now a huge Veronica Lancet fan just huge. So I can't get enough of it. I do plan on continuing her books later on. So Morally Corrupt, I gave it four stars. Definitely go check it out. The next book that I ended up reading, um, this is where we start going downhill in, in the whole reading experience. So I ended up picking up My Dark Romeo by Parker S. Huntington and L.J. Shin. I gave this book two stars. I don't even know why this book was ever written. It's terrible. Um, if you like it, I'm so happy that you like it, but I hated this book. I hated it so much, and I don't even know why I finished it. I'll be very honest with you guys. Maybe because I'm a glutton and I don't like to leave books unfinished unless I really have to. It wasn't that long. Um, terrible. Terrible. This book is also going to be getting sold. Um, but you are following our female main character. She was raised in the South with a very prestigious family. And of course, she was raised to be a virgin. So then, you know, she could be negotiated or sold off to, you know, another guy from another prestigious family. Anyway, we start with our female main character and she is at a party. She's like 21 or 22, something like that. And she's never had sex, never done anything other than like kissing, I think. And she ends up being approached by Romeo Costa. And he ends up taking, they taking her to the garden. She, he ends up asking her. The backdrop falls. They see her making out with this guy with his hands like up her shirt or whatever. Now she's sullied and her fiance that she is currently engaged to will not want her. So she ends up being married off to Romeo Costa. And that's where our story goes from there. Um, the whole story, the whole story is her being mean to him, him being, you know, brutal to her, and her trying to entrap him with a baby. There you go. There's the whole story. Um, you don't need to read it. Anyway, I ended up not liking it. I, I should have DNF'd it. I didn't. Um, I wanted to like this book. I just think that it had a lot of potential, but the way that it was executed was just terrible. I was so over hearing about him being like, I can't have sex with her, right? Because he doesn't want to have a family. And then you get her point of view where she's all like, I'm going to entrap him. I'm going to make him have a baby with me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, I'm done with both of you. <laughs> That's just how I feel. So two stars, definitely going to be selling this uh, special edition that I have that I that may still be available. I don't know. It's on Amazon if you can't find it, but it'll be on my Pango Books account if you'd like it. Um, but there is My Dark Romeo. So after reading that book, I needed kind of a, a palate cleanser. I needed something to get my mind off of that book because it was just so bad. So bad. Um, so I read a game between the suits volume one so this is a manga and it is following our female main character I have to look at their names because they're Japanese Chinese I don't know but um, her name is Seo and his name is Ryoichi okay 
So Seo is like married to her job in a sense where she is constantly working, constantly, you know, doing what she needs to do. Even whenever she's in the act of sex with other guys, she will answer her phone if work calls. So, you know, a lot of people give her a hard time about this and then all of a sudden she has these interns that start at her firm and Ryoichi I think that's how you say his name. He's one of them and he notices this and so he approaches her and he's like, well, we can just have kind of a little game of this, just a little work friends with benefits to blow off some steam. And if one of us falls in love with another person, then the game is over, right? So they're doing their thing, having sex, but I loved this story, the banter between the two characters, um, the way that they went about setting this up and stuff. I cannot wait to continue this. Um, it's not very long, but please make sure that you check trigger warnings on this because it is a very spicy manga. Very spicy. But I loved it. I ended up giving it four stars. Um, and I do have volumes two and three, I believe, that I am going to be continuing that was in my previous video. So can't wait to get to that. The next book that I ended up reading in September is Down Comes the Night by Allison Saft. Now, I was so excited for this because it was like pitched as like a gothic romance like a fantasy romance and I was like yes let's get ready for all of these October vibes it was not that <laughs> um it is a fantasy romance kind of thing and when it, and it's very light on the fantasy only because it deals with like some magic but that's about it um there is like no gothic elements that i personally think are in there you know but other people you know interpret gothic in other ways so it may be gothic to them but for me it was not i ended up giving this book three stars it was enough to hold my interest, to want to continue. It was not good enough where I think about it all the time. I have lost most of what this plot is about because I just did not like this book. You are following, <laughs> you are following our female main character and she is like a healer type of thing and she's in the war where these two kingdoms are warring against each other and she ends up healing one of the prisoners who ends up escaping so she gets punished by the queen and told that she cannot go out into the field that she's going to be back there with them trying to you know basically not be punished but yet still be punished kind of thing and then she gets approached by a letter by this lord and he's like I need you to come and live with me I need a healer all of these things so she's like well first why me and secondly okay I'm gonna go talk to the queen because he asks that you know she talk to the queen on his behalf he's trying to stop the war and all of these things so she ends up being told by the queen that she cannot do that so she ends up sneaking away and going to the Lord's house anyway, and she ends up meeting the, I don't even know what he's called, but his name is Hal Cavendish, and he is like this evil person from the other kingdom, and he's like killed so many people, and so she doesn't want to be around that, and she's scared of him, but he's sick, so she heals him, and then things go from there. She's in this house with Hal, she's uncovering you know like why all these people are being sick in his house and the story goes from there I I felt like the story premise of it was okay I liked the way that the author what they were trying to accomplish just the execution I don't feel like was there I didn't really feel the romance I didn't feel any of the gothic vibes that it was trying to give off um it did have a twist at the end but it wasn't like a huge twist that made my jaw drop on the floor. I was just like, okay, that's kind of expected. So it was a very slow read. It kind of reminded me of The Thorns Remain that I had read previously in the month. Just the way that the pacing is and kind of the writing style. And it just doesn't vibe with me very well. So I ended up just, you know, giving it three stars. It was okay, but nothing, you know... I'm not going to keep the book. <laughs> I'm not going to be thinking about this book for months on end. Um, it is what it is. I had a good time and that's about it. 
So the next book that I ended up reading was The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. So this is book one in a series. I haven't finished the series yet. Obviously, I just read book one, but I don't know if I'm going to continue on. It's still kind of up for debate. I gave it a three star. It was an okay read. It was just like any typical YA fantasy romance, but there wasn't anything that stood out or grabbed me or anything like that the way that Red Queen did. Um, this was a very like, the way that it's written and stuff like I just felt like it was very surface level there wasn't a lot of depth to the characters or the romance or anything like that but you are following our female main character who of course is from like noble birth um her father is like the great general and so they have a lot of money and she ends up going to they have like this like slavers market or auction whatever it is so she ends up buying a slave for far more money than she probably should have and ends up taking him back with her but she never like really tells him what to do she just kind of lets him do whatever so he ends up being a blacksmith on their land making horseshoes and weapons and such and her and this slave start getting closer like friends um they talk you know he's there to like entertain her and stuff and then the story goes from there. You find out more about the whole world of the politics. You find out about, like, the slaves and the nobility and the different, you know, things that have been going on for years. You find out about um, who he is and what his integral part is in this story. And the way that it ended, it was, it was something that I saw coming. I mean, there was no punchline for me. I mean, it was just like, okay, of course this is how it's going to end. It was intriguing enough to keep me reading and thinking about continuing, but it wasn't like an all-out like Red Queen where I cannot wait to continue this story. So I'm debating on if I'm going to be getting rid of my Illumicrate editions or not because I just don't know if I'm into the story. And so I need to read book two just to kind of confirm that for myself, which of course, um, you know, is going to be at the beginning of the year, unless I find a way to kind of slip it in, you know, um, outside of the TBR that I have, because I am kind of mood reading. So if I end up gravitating towards it, I'll read the second one, but I, I'm not putting it on there as a priority. So The Winner's Curse, it was three stars. It was okay. The next book that I ended up reading is The Maiden by Celia Aaron. I gave this book two stars. So I was going through um, Audible and I think I they had the two for one sale going on. And I think, was The Maiden on the two for one sale? I want to say that it was, but I couldn't find um, other books that I wanted to put with it because I had already previously purchased some of them. So I ended up just getting this separately uh, because Teddy Hamilton is one of the narrators of this book, and I am a huge Teddy Hamilton fan. So I was like, I'm going to read this book. It sounds really good. This book is dark. I mean, darker than any other book that I read in September combined. Um, you are following our female main character, and she ends up going to the cloister, which is a cult where, you know, 12, I think, virgins are there to learn how to basically please your husband, and then they will be sold off, bought off, whatever, to these higher wealthy men. Now, the women that are in this uh, cult, the virgins that you meet at the very beginning, they don't know that it's a cult and that's how things are going to be. They were drawn in because they thought that they were, it was a safe haven. They thought that, you know, they were just going to go worship God and learn about, you know, more about God from the prophet. That's what he calls himself, the prophet, um, who's over this whole cult. But our female main character knows better. She knows there's something weird going on. Um, we don't know exactly how she knows or why at the beginning. But she ends up getting brainwashed herself throughout all of this. Um, it's kind of interesting. But there is abuse, sexual assault. Um, there is a whole lot of things that go on. A whole lot of things. So you definitely need to check trigger warnings. But 
I just don't care. I just don't want to continue. Um, I mean, it's very dark. That did not, you know, sway my rating. It was more of the way that the story was told. It was more of like how the story's, you know, preparing you for book two and stuff. I just, I didn't vibe with it at all. So if you really, if you like a very dark romance um, that deals with a lot of heavy topics, Definitely pick up The Maiden. That's about all that I'm going to say. It's a two-star. I'm not going to continue. The next book that I, and this is the final book of September that I had read, is Whispers of You by Katherine Cowles. I gave this four-star. Now, I, I've i been gravitating towards contemporary romance a lot lately, but it has to be, like, specific contemporary romances which is fine and this book checked all the boxes I've seen some of the um, youtubers that I watch rave about this book so I finally decided to dive in and you are following our female main character at the beginning of the story um, something tragic happens I'm not going to say what it is and it affects her relationship with her high school sweetheart and they end up separating 10 years later he's back in town some weird things are happening around the community that kind of trigger things back 10 years prior. And they're trying to find out what is going on, who could be doing all of this. And so you're dealing with kind of a little mystery surrounded with the male main character and the female main character running into each other again. It is dual POV. I absolutely loved it. I feel like the trauma aspects of this story was written very well. I feel like the story was written very well, and I was intrigued. I absolutely loved it. I actually found myself crying in some parts. Um, so Whispers of You is a really good contemporary romance. It is a series starter. Um, I don't know if you need to read them in order because they are standalones, but I probably would suggest it because the way that it ended, um, you could tell that it was setting up book two. So I think you need to know kind of what's going on to understand why these characters, you know, are the way they are and what's going on behind the scenes. So definitely gave it four stars. Loved Whispers of You by Katherine Cowles. And I can't wait to continue on with that series. So those are all the books that I read in September. Um, any of these books that you have read that you liked, let me know below. Did I not like any of the books that you ended up liking? Definitely leave me comments below and also um, leave me a comment below if you are still here with this video. Um, give me an emoji on what you are feeling right now. Are you in the fall vibes? Are you one of my friends who is all about Christmas at the moment? Um, let me know below. Leave some emojis. But definitely check the description box like I said to go to Patreon, um, my Pango Books account, Instagram, or my Goodreads are listed all down below. Make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss any of my content. And if you didn't see my video previously to this one, I am going down to one video a week that will be going up on Saturdays every week until the middle of December. But until next time guys, I hope you have a great day. Bye!